All right, guys, so I'm going to be raising some Noctuid moth caterpillars. This is Gonadonna nutrix, the fruit piercing moth that lives down here in South Florida and it eats Anona. And guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I set up these caterpillars in order to raise them in captivity. As you can see, there's two really cool different color forms. And when I was out finding them, I wasn't actually expecting to get them. So I didn't like bring any containers or anything to put them in. The only thing I had was my daughter's hat. So I'm hoping that she forgives me because I used her hat to bring my caterpillars home in. Um, and so now I've got about five of these caterpillars and we're going to show you how to use them. And that was my wife's birthday recently and she got some flowers and that's beautiful. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Um, you're an amazing girl. All right, now guys, if you wanna learn some tricks on how to raise moth caterpillars, check out this video. And if you wanna find out how I found these guys out in the wild, you can check out the link in the description because I'll link it below. And we were out, we actually found some other caterpillars as well. This is a, um, these are two Brazilian skipper caterpillars that we found on some lilies and pond apple and this lily that these things feed on live in the same habitat. So I was able to get a two for one. But guys, this video is gonna be about raising Gonadonna nutrix, a noctuid moth in captivity. Okay, now what I did is I brought home, I think I got, let's see, one, two, one, two, I got three, four, five caterpillars. And let me see if there's anybody on this. I think one crawl. Yeah, so there's five caterpillars. And so this is not a whole lot. They don't get a whole lot bigger than this. In fact, these guys, I believe, are in final instar, which means that they don't have to too much further to go before they're, you know, they make their their cocoon, which is a really cool cocoon. So I'll show you that in another video. Um, but then I'm gonna show you a cool moth too. So uh, guys, I brought them home in my daughter's hat, like I told you. All right, now the first thing is uh, the container. So this is a little plastic container that you can get at a food supply store, something like that. And it's got a little plastic lid and it's pretty simple. I, I like them because you can stack them. It's a six quart container and they come in all different sizes. There's some that are taller, which I might need something taller for this big leaf here. But in this case, this is fine. Now what I did was I took a piece of paper towel and I folded it and I put it on the bottom as a base. So when I clean out the container, I'm just dumping out the paper towel and I put a new one in every day. And then I have a cup, a little 16 ounce cup in here with a little piece, piece of paper towel in it. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna put the stems of my host plant. I got two water picks. They're a little dirty, sorry, I gotta clean them out. But this is where I'm gonna put my host plant. Now, before we get these guys in their little new little home, I'm gonna show you the host plant that I got. When I clipped them, I live right down the street from the park where I found these guys. So uh, this is, Pond apple. It's in the Anona family. It lives down here in South Florida and it is the host plant for this cool little moth. And so uh, it likes water though, guys. So what we're gonna do is we are just going to put these stems in these water picks and you gotta get them inside a container fast that's airtight or at least somewhat airtight because if you don't and you leave them out in the air condition, they these leaves will these leaves will wilt. In fact, you can already see some of the the, wilt, the uh, newer leaves up at the front. They're starting to wilt already. So we need to get moving and get these guys in our container so that the air conditioning doesn't dry them out. All right, um, they need a lot of water. So this, this water pick in the morning will be completely dry. So I'm gonna need to be very diligent about filling these water picks up every day if I want the plant to last. Now, hopefully, you don't want to pit, put too much plant in a, in a container. Oh, that was not too good. I crushed a leaf or two. 
You don't want to put too many leaves in a container, guys. Uh, and the reason is because even though this plant needs air tightness and in order for the leaves not to wilt, if you put too much biomass in one little container, it's going to have a humidity problem. There's going to, the container is going to start to get condensation and that is what propagates virus in Caterpillar. So we don't want to put too much in. In fact, this could probably do, but because these guys tend to like new growth more, I'm going to put two stems in just like that. And I'm going to kind of crunch these guys down here. And now, so the water picks are in the cup and that holds them together. And then I have the leaves or the stems curled down so that they are facing downward. And the reason you do that is because the caterpillars will sit up here and eat. And then as they eat, they poop and the poop will just fall straight down onto the bottom. And then what they'll do is they'll start at the newer growth down here and they'll eat their way up the stem as they go. So that's pretty simple. Now the pretty easy part is we gotta get our caterpillars and we are going to put them in our container. So now this little stem here has got three of them on it. You can see they're, uh, let me film with my other hand here. Yeah, so this, this little stem here has three caterpillars on it and they are all almost fully grown. They might have a day or two left before it's time for them to make their cocoon. And I, I really love the cocoon of these guys because I've actually had them cut through pretty serious, all right, so this guy's already eating here for us. So let's see if we can brace him and make it a nice little video. But the mandibles on this caterpillar are pretty powerful and they can cut through screening. So I had them in a screen container once and when they went to go make their cocoons, what they do is they, they cut little pieces of a leaf and they, they make a housing out of the leaf. And what I, what I found was that these guys actually cut little pieces of our screen and use the little pieces of the screen for housing to make their cocoon, which that didn't work out too well because it ruined my uh, enclosure. But I love the coloration on these guys. And as you can see, when you disturb them, well, this guy's probably been disturbed enough. They've got this really cool velvety black coloration and white stripes and red dots or orangey dots. And so, and, and the stripes on the guys vary. So this is, this is two different color variations right here. And that is one crazy cool wacky worm that we have down here in South Florida. So guys, what you can do is you got to try to handle the caterpillars as little as possible. You don't want to pick them up with your hands too much. I mean, you can a little bit, you want to play with them a little bit, that's fine. But if you want to have the best health possible, try and cut little stems like this that they're on and, and handle the stem instead of handling the caterpillar. That, that will make things a lot better. So now what we can do is instead of plucking these guys off and causing them stress, which helps them get sick and maybe even die, I can just kind of wedge this stem in this leaf like this. And what they'll do is they will crawl onto the new leaves, just like that guy's doing right now. He's crawling right onto the new leaf and I didn't have to pluck him off the leaf because when you use your fingers, you pluck them off the leaf, it can hurt them. It can damage their insides, their organs, and you don't want to do that. So, all right, we got a couple more. Let's see, is there anybody on this? Nope, there's not. There should be two more. There they are. All right, so we got two more caterpillars. Look at the velvet black on that guy. Isn't that cool? So cool. All right, I'm going to jam this leaf. Let's see if I can jam it in here. Good. And they'll start cruising along and find their new home whenever they feel that it's safe. And pretty simple, guys. Then I'm going to close this lid. I'm trying to squash my wife's rose. I'm going to keep it airtight. But what I have to do is I have to be careful 
you know, in the morning when I look at this, gotta be careful if it's too much condensation, because this is now airtight, no uh, air is not passing in or out. Um, there's plenty of air in there for them to breathe, so don't worry about that. They, they live forever on the amount of air oxygen that's in here. But what I gotta make sure is that this container doesn't get too sweaty with condensation, because there's a lot of biomass in there and it can get too condensed, you know, there can be too much condensation and that will propagate virus and disease. So we're gonna be careful on that. But that's about it, guys. Uh, hope you liked the video. And if you want to get more on how to raise moth caterpillars, check out some of our future videos because I'm gonna show you these guys as they develop and show you, look how cool he is. I'm gonna show you guys as these guys develop and I'm gonna show you some, uh, probably the moth as well. And I'll show you the whole life cycle and we'll let them go and we'll have some fun. So uh, guys, go get a snack. This guy's eating his little heart out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Like the video, comment down below. Get Drop me a comment. If you enjoyed it, drop me a comment. If you have any suggestions, rearing suggestions, or if there's any species that you'd like to see us raise, uh, we'd be happy to do that. Um, but it helps out our channel if you comment on the videos. Um, check out our website, www.keysmoz.com. We've got a whole bunch of videos, or actually pictures and information on the butterflies and moths of South Florida and the Florida Keys listed on the website. But tell me that's not a cool caterpillar. I love them. All right, guys, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care now.